Howdy, Philosotakus. I've been trying to figure out what anime to do next, and I think I know just the one, but while I work on that, I'd like to throw my two cents into an issue that's kind of rampant right now. See, in light of those tragic Connecticut shootings, the video game violence debate has come up yet again. That is to say, do video games promote violence? Or, more precisely, did playing video games contribute to the Connecticut shootings? Now, lots of prolific gamers are tossing in opinions, and not the least of whom being Jim Sterling of The Escapist's Jimquisition and Bob Chipman, The Game Overthinker, both of whom I very much respect and both of whom have spoke on this subject before. To summarize their most recent opinions, Jim is of the opinion that video game violence is so removed from reality that it doesn't affect us, being something of a cartoony over-exaggeration that is not on the same level as the real thing, and that when faced with the real thing, that is, death and violence, most gamers flinch. And Bob held the interesting opinion that America idolizes the gun, in the same way Japan does the katana, and that due to that, as well as other factors, our general culture is more violent and that's more to blame than video games are. Both of them basically held the opinion that video games are not entirely to blame for violence in our culture. Jim, Bob, I have to say, you guys make some excellent points, but I generally disagree. But quickly, who am I? And why might I have anything interesting to say about the topic? Well, first of all, I'm a gamer, though admittedly I'm a little more RPG and interactive story than FPS, though I did love Portal. But perhaps more importantly, I'm an American soldier. One who has served in Iraq, and not as a comm guy or a defac worker, I was combat arms, and I was outside the wire on mission every single day. Okay guys, thought experiment. Think about a battle in World War II. I think about the very visceral opening to Saving Private Ryan, just violence and pain and death everywhere, exploding sand highlighted by sprays of blood and the sound of bullets wishing by. Okay, that in mind, now imagine only 20% of the soldiers in that battle are actually shooting their weapons with the intention of hitting anything. Now why do I ask you to imagine that? Because that's the historical reality. In any given battle, be it one that lasted only an hour or weeks or what have you, in World War II, only 15-20% to of soldiers would actually take part in combat. Faced with the SS or with waves of bonsai charges, the results were the same. 15-20%. The immediate question is why, and the answer is simply this, humans have an incredible resistance to killing their fellow man. Now let's flash forward to Vietnam, and the numbers have changed significantly. Now 95% of soldiers are shooting to kill. This is mind blowing, what could have happened in 30 short years? Well the answer is that the army took a new approach to training. See traditionally gun training had been done using bullseyes, but the army switched over to using silhouettes instead. They also didn't tell the troops to fire at the targets anymore, they told them to kill the enemy. Any current day soldier gets the same treatment today. And this isn't all though, we also saw higher emergence of scopes as well as technology like helicopter mounted machine guns. To get to the point guys, the army desensitized young soldiers to violence by giving them a veil of disconnect. Shooting a man isn't so hard when you've been practicing on silhouettes and looking through a scope gives a sense of unreality as well as diffuses much of the moral dilemma via distance. The same applies to the helicopter mounted machine guns. The new military training techniques made soldiers more capable of killing by detaching them from what was going on around them. So where do video games come into play? Well let me posit the following. As a result of video games we are not necessarily a more violent culture as culture feeds culture but we are undoubtedly a culture more capable of violence. Does this make gamers killers? No. Are video games at all responsible for those awful shootings in Connecticut? Not necessarily. Are video games the only thing that make us more capable of violence? No. Is the NRA right to blame only video games? No. But are we a culture with a level of disconnect due to video games? Yes. Could that level of disconnect be the means that an already troubled individual needs to push them over the edge? Yes, a very scary yes. Guys, there will always be crazies. This is a fact of life. Psychopaths have been around since the dawn of time and they are here to stay. There will always be the lone, isolated, abused, or repressed individuals willing to operate outside the social norms. And that is your standard source for shooters. With that said, our culture is one that has veiled us to violence's true face, and given us a level of disconnect from the real world relating to violence. 
Jim Sterling was correct when he said that, when faced with violence and real death, gamers are disturbed to see its true face. But Philosotakus, take it from me, witnessing violence is not the same as committing it. When forced or coerced or acting on impulse or whatever the reason a member of society commits an act of violence, they are more able to do so with a veil of disconnect to hide behind. Think of that Foster the People song. The kid in it was pretending to be a cowboy as he fantasized about shooting up his school. Or, let me put it like this. When I was young, I saw a farmhand fall into a combine, which shredded him into bits and twisted his body all into that farm equipment. It was awful and disturbing and messier than anything I'd ever seen or have seen to this day, and I still don't really like to think about it. I responded exactly as Jim put forth, with shock and awe, despite my gamer history with violence. I had played enough Max Payne 2 at that point that I was reciting Max's monologues for my speech class. Now, on the flip side of that, the first time I'd ever had to point a weapon at somebody, I immediately placed myself in the shoes of Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. And that's actually something I had to reflect upon after the fact. I wasn't entirely aware I was doing it at the moment. I do the same thing anytime I'm sparring with someone and I put them in the rear naked choke, which is a particularly nasty hold if you don't know about it. And it, it doesn't just have to be guns and chokeholds either, guys. My first elementary fist fight, to this day I remember going down with the drama and attitude and maybe a few moves of a pro wrestling match, of which I was a huge fan. Look, here's my point. We are a culture more capable of violence because of video games and movies and books and so on. We are a violent culture already, and yes, everything in a culture affects everything in a culture. But video games are of particular concern in my eyes because of the necessary player avatar connection. While that connection can allow for deeper and more personal stories and messages to be told, it also allows for a deeper ability to disconnect than any other medium. So how about this? What do you guys think? Have any of you guys committed acts of real violence? I mean, really hurt people kind of violence. How did you cope with it? I'm interested to hear. But for now and until then, I'm a Philosotaku. Stay hungry.